All right. Uh, welcome to the Asia Pacific call. It is August 11th of 2021. So welcome everybody. The minutes have been posted. So if you could add yourself uh, to the minutes, that would be awesome. And we have a pretty good agenda for today. Um, I think the first item is Yash, you are on. And we're going to talk a little bit about the translations. And Yahoi, you've also been amazing in this regard. So, um, you know, Yash, could you kind of help us through that a little bit? So, since our last meeting, there have been some changes. And these were mainly recommended by the mentor team of our GSOC project. So, Kevin, Georg, and Mark mainly added some suggestions. The major one of them was that uh, we won't be, you know, creating too much work for the working groups. They won't, uh, there will be only one extra uh, requisite and that would be that they would have to create a new issue in the translations repository, uh, you know, linking to the change in metrics or focus areas. And we would be providing the link of the PR or the issue in the working group. And yes, so the translation scheme could refer to that original issue and they will have to check the get history of the files. Uh, Kevin suggested that providing the commit hash was not a good idea since the process could get a sync because, you know, commit hash, uh, like a file can have multiple commits. So it's just simpler if someone could, you know, check the get history. Basically, that's the change that's been done. Other than that, um, the ninja steps remain the same. Kevin, did you want to add anything to Yasha's overview? Uh, not a lot. Uh, I think uh, uh, Yasha and Riddick have had a, done a really good job on this. So uh, generally, we're uh, from a from a release perspective, we're trying to keep things as simple as possible, and we also don't want to uh, we don't want to dictate too much of how things are done. We want to give the translation teams flexibility in, in how they're doing it. So, so we we don't want to give the translation teams too much work. We don't want to give the working groups too much work. We just want we want to keep it simple, and if we have to add more complexity to it, we'd, we'd rather add it over time uh, than, uh, than early on. Uh, so right now we're, we're gonna try to keep it simple and, and see uh, how this goes in the next release, which uh, our next release is scheduled for the uh, first week of October. Uh, so I, I think this document that we have here is a pretty good roadmap on how the, uh, uh, the releases can be done. Cool. And Yehoi, I had seen you had made some comments in here. I know you've been real active in the translation process. Did you have any comments as well? Uh, I think most of the comments has been answered by Yash and Kevin here in the documentation and through the meeting. And and I just noticed that uh, uh, Yash just had one note at. Uh, Meeting notes that uh, uh, hash uh, co hash commit ID will be removed, right? Yeah, commit hash. Uh, the reason so mentioned too much confusion. What kind of confusion? I, I don't understand. Like, oh, if we expect the working group members to you know provide the commit hash, and there could be you know later commits to the same document. So that could result in the metrics getting a sync. And I think Kevin discussed this. Kevin, do you want to add something? Yeah, so the, the metrics, when they when when we release the metrics, we use a continuous release process. Uh, and during that process, multiple pull requests and commits can be made on that metric. Uh, mm -hmm. So keeping track of individual hashes for okay. each of those commits uh, becomes a a point of, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a little weighty. Uh, and it also adds, it adds multiple points where the translations can become out of sync, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're not looking at the right commit hash, 
then the metric can be out of sync. If the if a working group uh, gives you three commit hashes, uh, the only one you really need is the last one. Uh, yes. So if the only one you need is the last one, then rather than getting a commit hash, uh, what we're suggesting is the working group just points you towards the metric that needs to be worked on. And if you need the commit hash, you can you can get the commit hash yourself by uh, looking at the commit history uh, and and doing the git diff there. So rather than the rather than the working groups providing the commit hash, we're proposing that if the translation team requires the the commit hash, uh, they just go to the the most current version of the metric, and and pull the commit hash themselves. Uh huh. Yeah, I I thought uh, we we do uh, we made some misunderstand misunderstanding here. What I means commit hash is it's not added by working group. I mean we would uh, add this commit hash into the commit message every time we we create a new pull request uh, into the uh, translation uh, okay. metrics. That's a, this is a common, so GitLab and GitHub don't work that way. Garrett does. They actually do put commit hashes in the messages. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not unprecedented in open source. I don't understand exactly, you know, if it's a, if it sounds like it's a process thing that translator, the translation team is doing, uh, at least the people who are doing the translation. Like, so from know, a, from our standpoint, if the if if that works for the translation team, if that if it's providing some function that's helpful, then yes, please do it. Uh, but from the from the release team standpoint, we don't want to dictate that all translation teams have to do that. So no, I so, agree with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean that makes sense. Yeah. And so feel so feel free to do it if it's working for you and it's and it's part of your process. Uh, yeah. Because I want to iterate uh, doing the uh, translation after uh, the metrics were uh, refreshed at end time. So I have to keep track any changes made uh, based on the translation uh, last time. So I, uh, I prefer to add this commit hash into my commit message. Then I do know where I should start from. Yeah. Okay. If, it, if it's working for you, then yes, please keep doing it. And, uh, and even maybe take some notes on how you're doing it so that uh, when, when we have the, so the, the next team that'll, that'll, that we're hoping to have uh, start working on translation teams is the Spanish team. Uh, mm -hmm. And it would be very helpful for them to be able to see how you've been doing it. Uh, so once again, we don't want to tell them how to do it. I, they, uh, We'd like them to figure out their workflow themselves, uh, and they can use your best practices to help figure that out. Uh, yep. But we don't want to, we don't want to dictate how they're doing it, nor do we want to dictate how you're doing it. So, because the the way you're doing it is gonna is working is working for you. So, and and we definitely encourage that. Okay. All right. Um, cool. This is great. Thank you for that discussion. Uh, Yash, is there, at some point, is there a move of these guidelines to the community handbook? Yes. Okay. We will be doing it this week. Okay. I just wanted to get it finalized in this meeting. Okay. We'll be adding it to the community handbook now. Okay. So, based on the discussion that was just about the commit hashes, does anything need to change in this document before it goes to the handbook? Uh, no, maybe no, no. Okay, no. Okay. The the if the if the Chinese translation team is going to continue using hashes, that's perfectly fine. Okay. But this this document outlines kind of the the overall general process, uh, and the basically this document outlines the points of communication between the release team and the translation okay. team. Okay. So if the if the hashes are being used by the translation team, that's a that's a tool that they are using, but it is not a communication 
it is not a piece of communication between the release team and the translation team. Gotcha. So, okay. Which is the primary purpose of this document. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Um, so on that, with respect to the community handbook, so here's the handbook. Uh, by the way, that was just um, there was just a presentation on the handbook about how good it is. <laughs> so by by some folks at uh, GitLab. So pretty awesome. Um, so do you have a thought on where this would go in the handbook, Yash or Kevin? Uh, probably down under community and around metrics. That's my guess. Like here? Yeah, in that area. It's oh, yeah, they're there. Okay. So there would there just be a new subheading here, which is called metrics translation, do you think? Uh, we we might so the this document here is kind of a it's part of the metrics releases. Uh-huh. Uh, so it's pro we probably uh, put it down in this. Here. So the metrics releases, this is gonna have to be edited. And it probably the yeah, it probably becomes part of this. Okay. So it just still remains the chaos metrics release, like this subheading here. And yeah, it'll just be a new heading called like translations component or yeah, I think it's I think it'll be easier if we if we keep this all together because the okay. the this this document actually outlines a lot of the uh, the release protocols as well. Okay. The release right process on. as well. Okay. Does that work for you, Yash? Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, any other comments on translations? I know we say this every time, but a huge thank you for all of the work in translating these into Chinese. That is absolutely amazing. Just can't say thank you enough for that. Um, awesome. Okay. Um, moving on, we have um, the metrics model discussion. So um, we, so if you recall, there was um, a PowerPoint document that was shared about how the metrics can be brought together in kind of a particular context, how we can think about the metrics that are distributed or produced by the chaos project, how they can be brought together in a particular context. Um, does somebody have that link handy? I could share it. I'd like to show it again really quick. You know what I'm talking about? I have it, but I'm... I think we have it in some notes. I think so. Yeah, it might be below, actually. All right, well, the, the premise is, is right, bringing together metrics in a particular context. And we, we're actually gonna have a new meeting time on this. Um, Elizabeth, do you remember? I just sent it in. Oh, thank you. Did you put it in the chat? Yes. Okay. Yes, so thank you. So in particular, kind of this imagery, right? So as we think about how metrics can be brought together, because I think this is a, a really great kind of next step for the chaos project to not just produce the metrics and produce the tools, but um, start providing guidance as to how the metrics can be brought together in meaningful ways. And this is one proposed model of probably hundreds of proposed models that could yes. exist. And so the, okay, so there's, there's another working group in the chaos project called the app ecosystem working group. And it's with um, individuals here in, in the US as well as individuals in Europe. And they're doing similar things where they're taking a look at, at kind of the app ecosystem space and about how metrics can be brought together as meaningful for that ecosystem. 
timing wise, because I know there's a lot of interest from folks uh, on this call in developing more of these models. Timing wise, that app ecosystem call just wouldn't work. It would be absolutely the middle of the night, your time. And it's absolutely impossible. I think, unless somebody can tell me otherwise, that it's uh, absolutely impossible to get a meeting where, where there were people from Asia Pacific region, North America and Europe. So, so as a result, um, we're gonna have two meetings that, that will address this issue. Um, and I will, some of us on this call in North America, I think will attend both of those meetings. So the, the work that's being done in the app ecosystem space, they've been thinking through kind of the processes by which you can develop these models, make these models available, distribute these models. They've been doing work in that regard. And I think a lot of that effort would help in, in this metric model, this metric model working group. So, so as to not repeat um, work from one to another. So um, Elizabeth, did, did you, did you, were you able to track down that time when it is? Well, um, I had posted it to the mailing list to see if we could change it because yeah. the, the original um, idea was to have it around one o'clock, which one o'clock, uh, sorry, Eastern, which is, you know, in the middle of the night. So, um, <laughs> uh, so uh, we were proposing, I'll just drop it in here because it's easier. Um, that's the time we were proposing, but no one really spoke up to say if that was okay. So I don't know, whatever you all want to do is fine. We can do it. Yeah, we're pretty flexible. I mean, this is to, to make it work for you all. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, I can, I think thank thanks for everyone in this team, especially for Inspire guys for the timing uh, difference concerning uh, it, um, which means <clears throat> it's uh, seven a.m. in China. I yeah. think yeah, yes. it's pretty fun. I always get up on six. So. It's okay. Uh, to get <laughs> I think we had some um, some people on the West Coast that wanted to join as well, which is kind of why we were trying to get uh -huh. something that would work for that those okay. groups of people. That's so, um, can I go ahead and put that on the calendar then? Is that okay with everybody? So, is this one not inclusive of the European folks? Um, I mean, they could join. It's pretty late. Yeah, we kind of we kind of knew we'd have to have a separate meeting for this because the app ecosystem one is like at eleven or noon. Yeah, something noon. like that. Yeah, it, it uh, can. Two groups can work on the same problem. <laughs> I think that's what we're going to have to do in this regard. Yeah, I agree. And then we'll just have a couple people attend both, so we can try to bridge the knowledge in one to the other we don't want to we don't want to work on this in this meeting well uh, lucas couldn't join because lucas lucas on the west coast wants to participate as well he's in california oh yeah so that was the problem there so yeah um, when I uh, so I'll I'll just send a quick message to the mailing list and say that's what we're doing, and then anyone else who wants to join this conversation can then join the app the next app ecosystem meeting on whatever date that is. Is that okay? Is that cool? Yeah, and this one will be called Metrics Model yep. Working Group or something yep. like that. Yeah. Yep. That's okay. Cool. All right. Cool. And I think you know some of our some of the things to think about are. Like, how do we, like, what are the models, right? Of course, like, what are the models that need to be developed? But also how do we um, like distribute those models to others? Like what's the best way to kind of represent these models through the website, through, I don't know, through social, I have no idea. Like, but, and now we have the website has been moved. So we have a, a lot more latitude as to how we display these things. So Kevin can really help in that regard on the website. Um, so look, you know, I think that's, these are the things to think about. And I think the app ecosystem has been thinking through this. And so we can pull from what they've already done over the last year to, to try to inform what we do here. Good question. 
before yeah. we move on. Do we have any uh, anyone that has a design background or um, some someone with experience in visualizing these, like on on the web, visualizing similar kind of things? I mean, Don. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, certainly, we've done a lot of visualization with Augur of, of these kinds I can of make metric crappy models. Crappy graphs. That's what yeah. I can do. Crappy graphs. I, am, I yeah. have no design skills whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, most of the graphs in Augur are not individual metric graphs. They're what we are calling metric models today. I think yeah. I met someone like a little more holistic that could like explain the concepts behind yeah. what we're doing. It's, I was just curious. I mean, we. This, this group has a lot of expertise, I think. But it, that's a really, it, it's always a hard skill to find somebody who's really good at doing that. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you meet somebody, you're like, oh, I have an idea. And then you meet somebody and you're like, oh, my idea is horrible. <laughs> Your mm -hmm. idea is amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I was just thinking too, oh. like, we're so close to the metrics that it would be good to also have somebody who isn't as familiar with the metrics. Because yeah. this is for yeah. beginners, right? People who aren't super familiar with what we're doing. And we're trying to like, you know, explain how you can kind of package these up in different ways. And so, I don't know, it was just a thought. If we do, if, if it's like, if it's just us, that's fine. We'll just have to kind of be aware, I mean, you know, of what that, that curse of knowledge, like we know too much. <laughs> so we don't know what we don't know kind I of think thing. I think the challenge is always getting a person who's an expert in visualization up to speed with the context of what we're trying to express. And, and that part could take a long engagement for that person. It's that, yeah, that would be my only concern. I'm thinking of, I should talk to Emily because she has a, a web design, Emily Brown. I don't know who that is. But... She is helping us with, um, the accessibility audit of the web page, just taking a look at, or the website, I should say. Um, and I, I should see if her organization has expertise in that area, because that could be good. And, and Emily, to your point, Sean, then Emily's been on the chaos calls for a year. I mean, she's quite- Yeah, she's got before. context. If, yeah, if there's a, data visualization is just a very, narrow skill compared to general stuff that's that's all i don't know if this is data visualization as much as it is like like this style of visualization like how you would bring metrics together in a meaningful context so it's not necessarily to me at least it's not necessarily oh, so it's a it's like the metadata visualization yeah exactly yeah um okay yeah that's what i was kind of talking about Someone okay. who can take like this kind of concept and like put it in a form that like someone who has never seen our metrics before could could easily kind of grasp right. That's off the that's a user yeah. interface problem yeah. more than a data visualization problem. That yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. Okay, all right. So let's just give that action item to Don. Is what I heard. No. <laughs> <laughs> But the people who 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 is gonna looking through our model, I mean, at least they should have some background of open source, right? So they should familiar some some events or activities happened uh, in the uh, open source community collaborations. Uh, for example, how to how to uh, create an issue, how to handle handle it uh, in the GitHub or any other platform. I think. At least those contacts should be uh, included by by users or, or any attendees. Yeah, I would one hundred percent agree with that. That they would have to have some kind of base knowledge of what is an issue, what is a PR, what do, what do these things kind of mean, and have a general feel for you know how open source works and like how these pieces kind of fit together already. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I can also think though, like of a metrics model that is almost built like off of the diversity, equity, and inclusion badging program. So like you're an event organizer. <laughs> Here are metrics that you want to think about as you're organizing an event. And so there may so, be a whole, whole array of different models for different contexts. And some different... more like user um, archetypes. Yeah, use cases. 
No, more like uh, like who are the you know the use. It's not use cases more than it so much as it is like you get. I think archetype. I can't remember if it's archetypes or there's another word for it. But personas. Personas. Yeah, these are user personas. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what are the metrics models that a user persona, like a community manager, a maintainer, uh, a corporation with thousands of projects? What are what are their for, for that persona? What what is what are the metrics models that are useful to them? Exactly. Yep. I don't. I don't know that we need to actually define personas in that though. I mean, we can we can simply say this is someone who is interested in, you know, having an event. You know, these are use cases around events. We don't need to create a persona for someone who uh, is putting on an event. Well, the, the badging program is a use case around an event, but most of our metrics are not use cases around events. And, and we have, I think we have a lot of use cases around specific things that are embedded in sets of discrete metrics, but we haven't, this is the, this is sort of the representation effort of people consuming the metrics. I think it's different. Right. So, I mean, the, the example that we're looking at here is how the, the metrics fit within a uh, the, the development process, right? Yeah. Yes. So uh, yeah. I, I could envision I could envision another data visualization similar to this about how the metrics fit within a you know event uh, the process yeah, of throwing an event or something like that. Yeah, we are planning to deployment the uh, operation flow or the common flow. So. This is just one of each, uh, just in the development flow. Yeah, so I think we can make some swim name uh, flow chart or other form of the chart. So therefore, uh, the persona centric or the uh, process centric. So we can put a different chart, I think. Is the suggestion that we could have two different approaches to these models, one persona, one process? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I agree. I agree with that. I think there are a couple of different ways we can look at it. But, but once again, I, I don't know that persona is necessarily the, the, the best way to look at it. It's, it's, still, it's still more about uh, a, a, a specific use case or uh, well, rather than a persona. So, okay. The wonderful I, thing I is we, have, a, we can do both. I, I think we have a different view. I think we have a different understanding of what a metric model would be useful for. The wonderful thing is we have a meeting on the 17th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about this. So, so welcome it, to the meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and I think, yeah, and I think about it, explain it, it'd be like, all right, our discrete metrics are very granular. And the badging program is a good example of kind of like a mid-level design where it brings together a few things really to gather data and then represent it back, but still functioning largely as discrete metrics for one use case. And when I look at these models, I see them as being more or less useful to people with different jobs. And, and that's a, it's a higher level view than what we've taken so far. And I think, so when I look at the metrics models, the value I see is I can show a metric model for a community manager. Right, but a, but a community manager is just a job. It's not a, like a, a persona is a more in-depth snapshot of a, of, a, of a user, of a potential user, right? You, right. You actually right. get yeah. you get detailed. You get detailed with personas. You're right. You would do that uh, for the community manager. So can uh, we? Can we? I think it, be, it becomes less. Sorry. I think personas <laughs> I, are something completely <laughs> different, which is I think the point that uh, Kevin's trying to get across. And we yeah. keep bringing in personas, but that yeah. has a very specific user experience definition. Mm -hmm. um, that when I hear Sean talking about it, I don't. I don't think that I feel like people are using different definitions of personas when they talk about it. And I think it's creating a bit of confusion. Yeah. And this comes up every time we talk about this metrics model, I think. 
Fair. Thank you. We're going to yeah. thank, thank you. We'll solve this the 17th. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. It's it's perfectly fine to build use cases that are targeted towards community community managers or program managers. However, when we when we were talking about personas, exact it's exactly what Don said. So it's a it's it's a very specific thing uh, that's used in the design of systems. So we're not we're not designing these use cases specifically for one persona like they can be used by other personas uh so we, we design the use case rather than rather than towards one individual okay talk about it on the 17th yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is great though i mean these are exactly the things that need to be sorted out precisely so these are the discussions that we do need to have um so that it's meaningful for people who are using these, you know, as we present them on, as a community. So that's great. Um, we have three more things on the agenda today. So um, we're back to Chinese translation. So I think they're almost finished. Um, but that's the comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Share. yeah, just share this news to everyone of you here. Uh, I noticed like uh, soon and the, and the might you just uh, uh, create a new two uh, two new issues about this new matrix translations. I have taken these two issues yeah. and uh, start start the translation work. Okay. And for the other things, I think are most finished. We just need to revise the something after the matrix got some refresh during this period. Okay. period. Mm. And uh, the other thing is about uh, yeah, green map green map gating. Yeah, and we discussed a little bit on the uh, GitHub and also on the Slack channel. And finally, last week I, I created this uh, solution uh, on the GitHub and uh, and have already submitted the code on, on, on this link. And uh, the following job is about uh, maintaining maintaining these uh, solutions and uh, welcome everyone and to start using these solutions to give give us the feedback. That is fantastic. We have um, Daniel. I don't know if you had seen this at all. The Grimoire Lab Giddy. Mm, yeah, I know. Uh, I know this was this was. Uh, Daniel is the first person to answer my question. Okay. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> yeah. When I post my question, I, uh, am I allowed to 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 add this Giddy solution into Grimoire? And uh, Daniel gave my feedback and give me the suggestions, yeah. I think Santi now is reviewing or it's already really done, right? Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Daniel, uh, I think Git is a new market for chaos for Grim Live. You know, uh, there are almost uh, millions of projects that mm. Git. Mm. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, thank you for the contribution. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Um, I, I assume Giddy is growing quite quickly as a yes, platform. Yes, pretty quick. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, next week we uh, uh, we uh, Harvest Open Open Europe project uh, we will hold a meetup with Giddy on okay. the license conference in Shenzhen. You know. Cool. So the Giddy's homepage is. Uh, show the advertisement on it you can see it nice all right cool um well that's fantastic that's that's really great thank you for that contribution and daniel thank you for taking a look on the grammar lab side well it was mainly sandy and, uh, oh, well, then, and so on so I, I i was just in the right place at the right moment saying hey this is great okay cool well thanks for being in the right place at the right moment um all right, cool. And then the, the last thing on the list is um, the OSS Summit China. Does that somebody... was me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's just to, 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 to let you know that William here in the call and, and me, we submitted a couple of talks uh, to the Open Source Summit in China. But by the way, the call for papers is uh, closing on the 16th. So there is still uh, some days, as well as for the call for papers for chaos, by the way. Um, um, yeah, we, we talk about, uh, or, or the goal here is the, the titles 
one of them is on the need for metrics to engage with open source communities. That's one of the talks we'd like to, to share with the audience there. Um, and the other one is, I think, something that we have perhaps directly or indirectly discussed here in Chaos, and I, I thought that might be worth sharing with you, which is the title is Working Closer, Understanding Cultural Differences. And that's a topic that I, I would say, Willem and I, we are passionate about this because we, we've been talking to each other for a while for other reasons, right, out of, out of Chaos, in of Commons and some other places. Um, and it's, I would say it's, it's quite interesting how we see things, um, how we try to understand each other, how we can see things in different ways, depending on the, on the topic or so. But in any case, we've had the opportunity to work together, even given the, you know, the language differences or the cultural differences or so. And that's probably part of the, um, um, perhaps the and I discussion that we can run within chaos at some point. Uh, but uh, I wanted to, to let you know. Willem, you're, you're around, so I don't know if you'd like to, to share something else. You may know that Georg just uh, invited me to, to have a, a topic uh, on this meeting uh, to introduce the chaos, how to use chaos metrics uh, with the green light gate uh, to show, uh, to introduce about the whole matrix with the matrix models, something like that. I think it, if I remember correctly, it's hold on December 6th. And we have quite a long time to prepare for that because I think before that we have several months to, to doing the discussion around the matrix model and the matrix mm -hmm. discussion. We would have so many output or treatment about this part. So. I'm very glad to, to share uh, those ones with, with people uh, in this meeting. Did, did you say the, the um, it's in December? Is that when the meeting is? It's uh, December. Yes. Nine and 10. Yeah, yeah, it's in December. December 9th and 10th. OK. OK, yeah. Good. Yeah, I, I think this is a very good opportunity to 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 um uh, to, to let more people to know about the chaos and mm -hmm. uh, I, I I guess that there's a lot of uh, uh, old school um, people uh, who 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 really interesting about that. Oh, by the way, I I can share some uh, uh, interesting informations I, I I got in the uh, Apache Kong, uh last week mm -hmm. and uh, in a community check. <laughs> Uh, uh, there's uh, some uh, discussion about uh, uh, chaos, and uh, there's uh, all, another uh, Apache project. Uh, uh, and cause, uh, it starts with K, but I, I'm sorry, I forgot, forgot the name. But oh, uh, Kibble, uh, Kibble. yeah, yeah, Kibble and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Sean Fogger and just to sh share their some. Um, uh, there are some discussions on the uh, uh, with the chaos, and uh, and yeah, uh, we, we... Augur has submitted uh, uh, two presentations for OSF Summit China. Good. Well, wow. one is focused on licensing because we've got a really robust licensing management module, and um, the other is on the dependencies work that the Google Summer of Code accomplished for us. We've implemented the OSSF scorecard and have also, um, I would say, re-engineered the ideas behind the original libraries.io platform. And so those are the two things we're going to talk about. Because in our historically, those have been the, the topics of greatest interest when we've gone to the licensing and compliance summit in Japan. And they're obviously they come up all the time here. Okay. Um, could you maybe we can finish the thoughts on Kibble and Apache? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I thought I heard my name. Maybe I didn't. I don't think so. Uh, oh, I, sorry. I think it... <laughs> I, I swear to God, I heard my name. I'll just jump in and talk about myself. Uh, enough, enough about me. Let's stop talking about me. Let's, what do you think of me? <laughs> sorry. <The> deep apologies. <laughs>
So you were saying about Kibble and and with Sharon and just the connection with chaos. Did you have a? Uh, I I think they they already uh. Have... Sorry. That's okay. Oh okay. Uh, Oh, we can wait, 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 wait for some. some I, I, oh, I, I have my, new, my, new. my. Okay, yeah. ready? <laughs> okay, okay. My, my, my daughter just uh, <laughs> come here. <laughs> wow. Ah. Okay. Uh, 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 okay, you first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me go first. So, uh, I have, uh, I have the uh, uh, news for Kels. So, uh, you know, the Open Atom. Foundation, the China first uh, uh, foundation, open source foundation. Uh, we will hold the you know, one year analyze the uh, sorry one year uh, uh, analysis analysis uh, the, the 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 develop days uh, summit on October uh, and uh, there have almost seven sections. Uh, one section is uh, governance. So, so I, uh, I'm the, I'm the, um, I'm the manager of the, this session. You know, the I have received a, a topic about the chaos, how to, uh, how to use the chaos metrics to manage the governance uh, community. Uh, I approve it and pass the, pass the, pass the topic, and uh, uh, the the speaker is Tung Jun. You know. Uh, the active contributor for our translate translate uh, for chaos into Chinese. Yeah, uh, she will uh, speak how to use the chaos uh, metrics to uh, damage the uh, the community. Nice. Uh, she 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 is, will share share the share the topic. Uh, maybe Do I can. Is it developer yeah. comment? Is that what you said? Sorry, what was the name of the event? Uh, the event is uh, sorry. I, I I will check. I will check. check it. Minutes. Okay. Okay. Cool. That's great. I, by the way, I just seen this wiki page about uh, the the compare between the cable and the, and the, and the, and the chaos metrics. Oh, okay. This is from the, was this from the conference? The Apache Con? Yeah, conference, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and uh, I, I think a lot of people gave, gave a very uh, good feedback about, because in the uh, community track, a lot of uh, uh, people are, uh, okay, as the community manager, they made quite interesting about how to uh, use the metrics. And uh, I think a lot of people in China they already know about the chaos, but uh, they barely have uh, tools to help them to 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 find the right uh, metrics to, uh, to 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 measure the the, the performance of the uh, community. This is really so, interesting. Yeah, it looks like a lot of eyes has already on the chaos metrics, no matter in China or something. So Cable just mentioned here that uh, if Cable already support the implementation about this metrics through their platform, right? Okay. Did any, I hadn't seen this. That I didn't know. Did anybody know that Cable was doing this work with chaos metrics? I did no. not. I, I was not aware of it. That's cool. No. I'm, I, it's pretty cool to I see. I just heard some. I heard some discussion uh, this week or last week in the Chaos China uh, communities. They just mentioned that Cable was uh, active, was not active for, for one year or two years, but they suddenly become active recently. And maybe they are doing some re refactoring, refactor work in the past several um, months, so they are not so active. but. Uh, but recently they have finished the whole refactor work. So they start that, focusing the more metrics implementation. That is really, platform. That's yeah. cool to see. I know that, was it Daniel Bruno? Was that who was? 
doing Kibble? Does that Sharon, sound familiar? Sharon Foga is the one that I uh, see talking. Well, I, I'm on that email list, and, yeah. and you're right. It it, uh, it was it was inactive or inactive for several years, and about a, about a year ago, it all of a sudden popped up again. Okay. So Sharon Foga is the one that I usually see emailing on on that list. That She's is. the one that authored this wiki page. It looks like, ah. um, but it hasn't been updated for more than a year. So uh, if you look the, at his last yeah. modified. The roadmap is ends in March night of 2018. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it looks like this Kibble review against the chaos metrics happened in May 2020. So it's been a while. Maybe I should reach out to Sharon. I know her mm -hmm. real well, and I can just see kind of where they're at. I because I had to your point, I had kind of taken Kibble off of my my radar just because I thought it wasn't active. But if mm -hmm. there is work being done, that's cool. Yeah, it it's it seems like it was it got off to a really great start and looked very promising, but there aren't nobody's committing resources to it. All mm -hmm. right, I'll do a little bit of investigation. But thanks for sharing that. All right, everybody, we are at the end of time. Does anybody have any last comments or anything like that? Uh, can call can go just to pop up the name of that uh, event. Open Autumn Foundation One Year Celebration. Yeah, I, I put it okay. in the link calendar. So I I will I will give you the link, but uh, I found the link is uh, Chinese, <laughs> not English. It's always that in Chinese problem for us people who live in the U <laughs> that don't speak Chinese. <laughs> so but there is a topic about uh, chaos. Uh, I think uh, uh, they will. Upload the 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 video into the Bilibili or YouTube. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. All right. Um, well, again, thank you so much for all of our 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 friends on this call. It's absolutely wonderful, and the progress is absolutely amazing. So, yeah. Um, till next time. Till I see some of you in two weeks, or some of yeah. you on Slack, or all that kind of stuff. Till then. Take care. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.